Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Get Jashed. Today, I'm very honored to have with me Alegria Tosi. She is from Ecuador and a coach and anthropologist specializing in gender studies. Alegria is also the author of an academic article on women in Islam and now coaches women creating a passionate self-love affair and stepping into their most radiant and abundant self. So there is so much depth that I'm excited to hear about Alegria's experience and, and what she has to share. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Jesse. I'm so excited to be here. Um, so I wanted to dive straight into what is, I guess it's a bit of a broad question, but what is like the story of your life that led you to your work? What, what do you feel like that journey took you on? Yeah, absolutely. So first, um, I was always interested in spirituality. Um, I, I was brought up by a mother who was very into personal development. Um, I was very lucky to have that example. And so I was never really into any sort of um, fixed religion. And then um, I remember like asking my father what a mantra was when I was four years old. Yeah. <laughs> and that led me into this big quest um, spiritually. And, and this, I had this big curiosity around spirituality. And I would feel very um, at home um, mm. in spiritual environments. So that led me at some point to um, converting to Islam when I was 20 years old. And um, in that journey, um, I was really, I feel like I was looking for connection and I was looking for, um, yeah, connection and love. Then, I got married when I was 22. I got into an arranged marriage, basically. And um, that resulted in the one that was my husband leaving four months later uh, without saying a word. And in that moment, I just got to rock bottom because I was so clear on how... I had walked into this experience in my life, how I had manifested this experience based on the beliefs that I had about myself, because I had all this um, signs or all this, uh, yeah, nudges from my intuition, basically, that this was, this was not the relationship for me. Um, but I didn't really know how to listen to myself and I didn't know how to uh, love myself enough to just say um, no because this is, this just doesn't feel right it was all about like oh but I, I I already said yes or I already this or or um I can't break it now or all sorts of things instead of this radical um self-love and and listening to myself so deeply that I, I didn't care about all those things mm. but because I wasn't in tune with, um, first of all, like the universe um, and how the universe was telling me and, and giving me all this information that now I just know how to tap into and, and just use in my favor uh, constantly so that I can, I can manifest much more intentionally, but also faster and, and easier so that's, that's sort of how it began and I got super into um, well manifestation and also into self-love and I, I remember using um, energy tools like tapping and other forms of energy work um, a lot and, and really diving deep into healing and I was just super committed to, to that work, to that inner work. And after that, what happened was that I remember I was uh, just talking to friends and stuff like that, and they would begin to ask me for advice. Um, I then studied more in-depth coaching and it, it kind of all went from there. Yeah, <laughs> but that's, that's how it started. <laughs> 
as as it as it tends to do especially when you hit those rock bottom moments like you you don't always believe that you're going to get out of it um and eventually you hit enough rock bottom moments in life that you know that you will but you just you know you don't always know how and then things kind of tend to unfold in a really big aligned way most of the time after that but I love how you thank you for sharing all of that by the way but I love how you share around because it is always in reflection sometimes you know if we haven't listened to the signs like our gut feeling or the universe or however you however you identify it like with it and we look back and be like oh like you know I I knew that that wasn't right for me and, and still I did it anyway because I was afraid of saying no even after I'd said yes and I'd already committed or whatever it is and I feel like that gets that gets in our way a lot sometimes even when we are aware it still feels challenging to go like oh okay I am noticing that this isn't aligned anymore and yet um I've already said yes so like you know it's still we still go through that discomfort anyway like whether we are aware of it in the moment or in hindsight so I think that's a really great way to to view what it means when we manifest these things in our life because it's not from a blame perspective it is from a oh well like I created it because I ignored my gut or I wasn't in touch with you know my gut or I didn't know the signs like I didn't understand what they meant at the time so I think that in itself is a really powerful reminder for people too so and it's yeah, just absolutely yeah with your something that you just said uh, yeah. that, that really calls my attention is that um often we we don't know how to um not only listen to ourselves, but it's very easy to listen to your intuition mm. when it's nice. Like when it's like, oh, go have a massage or yeah, go <laughs> out to this restaurant or whatever. But yeah, it's not often that easy when it's don't like this partnership is not aligned anymore or this mm. thing uh, is not in alignment anymore or this does doesn't feel good anymore so yeah. that's when it gets tricky I think. Yeah, yeah that's such a good point because it is like if something feels uncomfortable because it means that we have to do the opposite of what feels nice like it can be easier to ignore because we're like oh but you know what if I'm just being silly or what if like oh I, I don't want to and we as humans we tend to take the path of least resistance sometimes and and that can be just going with what feels comfortable rather than what actually feels right for us also. So that's a really, really good point that you bring up too, because like how many times does that happen? Um, did you, if I may like ask a little bit more personally as well, like in the mm -hmm. lead up to your marriage, to your wedding, knowing that it was already like, what was the time period there once you knew, like what was the engagement time before the actual marriage? Um, so it was pretty, pretty fast. And that was a big part of, um, this whole thing was that I, this was an, um, basically an arranged marriage and it was about, um, I think two months, uh, mm -hmm. since we met and decided to get married. So it was, it was a whole, I think it was an experience that really, um, um, grounded me in a in a in a few different levels so I feel like I was even less in touch with because I had uh, less space I didn't create the space to mm. feel into um this whole situation I think as well so, yeah um that was a big part of it as well for sure yeah wow yeah and it is like part of I think creating our lives is about giving ourselves space to actually inquire within and have an understanding of what what this feeling means to us or what a different feeling means to us and and what that then would encourage us to do so um that sounds like a very quick turnaround for you <laughs> like a really super yeah. quick turnaround <laughs> yeah um, and 
and just not, that you mentioned about creating space and I think something that I work on with my clients all the time is um, when you want to manifest something and you just say and this happens all the time like around New Year's Eve right mm. now we just get into this pressure of I have to know what I want before the next year and that pressure to just set goals often doesn't allow you to create the space to actually be grounded in those goals mm -hmm. and actually um, have this this feeling of um, okay I am listening not only to what I want but what else wants to come and what are the things that like for example what are the 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 words that are coming up all the time that I'm reading, that I'm listening, like if you create, actually create the space, you are able to get more depth and more in tune. And then when you have listened and you have stopped, then you can actually commit to your desires way, 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 way deeper than if you just create this uh, list of resolutions for new year's eve um, yeah so creating space i think with your desires is absolutely crucial as well in mm. in general yeah you're right because like whether it's new year's eve or whether it's you know a choice to go to university or college after school or something like that like sometimes mm -hmm. a lot of it isn't so much about what we want but we feel like we have the pressure to to have something down on paper as an intention or as a goal because like just to have something there as well and it's it's more about like that feeds the sense of oh am I fitting in am I doing the right thing versus am I actually do I actually want this or am I rushing you know putting down these intentions for example um just for the sake of having intentions because everyone says I should do it on New Year's Eve or New Year's Day and now it's like the 5th of January and I still haven't done it but you know like so there can be a pressure that we put on ourselves and that like the world in some way puts on us as well to um mm -hmm. to rush that process but like if you reach the beginning of the year and you're not quite sure like what if you just start with what you know what if you just start with well I know that I want to feel more ease in my work this year you know what if you just start with that and then allowed it to unfold because that might be just the perfect place to start right like that might be all you need in that moment absolutely mm. um absolutely. I know yeah I know that in your work and I watched one of the videos where you were talking about it you shared about riding the wave of energy and what allows people like how, what that allows people to do in terms of their energy and taking action. Can you share a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. So riding the wave of energy is something that I, I've, I've gotten this um, sort of this term for it. Um, and what it means is that you can be so in tune with your own um, energy and your own and awareness of how you feel at every different moment that you just know exactly when is the right time to manifest something and to take action towards something. So when you have a desire, whatever, whatever that desire is, let's say you want a new job, you want a new relationship, um, you are first often in resistance, in resistance to that desire, right? You're feeling all this resistance towards having that desire in your life, often because you have all these limiting beliefs around it, often because you don't see yourself as someone who has that, right? So this is, this is what happens when you say, for example, I think I want a relationship, but I don't know if I'm ready. Or um, I think I want a new job, but I'm feeling resistance towards creating my resume. Or I want a new client, but I'm not sure about my prices. So all of this, there's, there's still like wonky energy there that is not 
clear, clean energy on that desire. There's still resistance. And, and this feels like you thinking about, I want this and feeling contraction. Mm. Often when you feel like, when you say, I want something and you feel this feeling of, but it won't happen. And, and then, and it's contraction, you know that you're in resistance versus when you say, I want this and you feel excited and like, yeah, I can do that. Like if you think about um, a quantity of money, for example, that you feel absolutely sure that you could get tomorrow. And when you think about like, I want to manifest this, then you feel pretty much excited about it mm. because it, you see it as possible versus when you think about a quantity of money that you want to manifest but it's like out there in what you believe it's is possible for you then you often feel contraction because you're not yet a match for that so um first before you like jump into taking action and this is what i find often with my clients they want a new job or they want a new relationship or they want more money and they try to jump straight into action and then they either don't get it or they manifest something that is in opposite of what they want so um for example i had this client who wanted a new job and she really um, wanted this awesome job that she would feel excited, that she will feel where she would feel like challenged and, and be around people with new ideas and, and things like that. And she actually manifested a job that she felt like it was perfect. But then she realized that there was no like balance in that job, that she was expected to be on her computer at, like 24 seven and on weekends and there was, it was a very uh, masculine <laughs> oriented kind of environment that she didn't actually feel good in. So she was able to say, oh, this is not what I wanted, right? And, and that's often when we, when we are manifesting something from a place of um, not being clear enough or resistance, we often manifest something that is kind of like this vibration of feedback um, mm. that is just telling us where our vibration was. So it doesn't mean anything, right? It's not like, um, oh, the things never work for me, which is often like what we make it mean. So we manifest, we want to uh, manifest a new relationship. And this happened to me like um, a few months ago. So I went in a new relationship and I started like dating people. And I, what I found was that all the people that I dated were very into their, um, their careers. And they felt like they had to choose between having a relationship and having a career in this moment. So, and all the, the people that I was meeting were in this vibe. So I was like, hmm what is this telling me like what is it about me what where do I believe that I can't have both where am I not uh, open or where am I not really committed um to having this desire in my own life or in my own um being or in my own energy so mm -hmm. it's not often about the job or the relationship or the other person or the, the people that you're meeting it is always about you and what it's what you have to still heal so what I decided to do in that moment was to just stop altogether and go back to cleaning up that energy cleaning up the beliefs that said that I couldn't have this um that I wasn't ready or that I couldn't have a business and a relationship or that I couldn't x y and z and what I found was that once I was able to like release all those things and even release the um the need 
quote unquote, um, of that manifestation to happen. Because when I had said it was like in 2020, one of my desires was to have a new relationship. So I was like, okay, maybe this didn't happen in 2020 and that's okay. And in that moment, when I dropped that, I went on one date and uh, I manifested a new relationship that I love and that it's, it's super um, aligned uh, mm. with what I wanted. So it's often this, um, this moment with, that we have to go back and say, okay, what is it that I still need to heal? What is it that I still need to release? And then take action from there. Because you can go on a million dates or um, a million job interviews or <laughs> client calls and, and, and all the things. But if you feel this contraction in your body when you think about manifesting this, then the energy is not there yet. Mm. And you know when the energy is there, when you, you feel this ease, clarity, and excitement around it. Yeah. I love one thing you, you said in there. I love all of that. But like one thing in particular that you said was around like it doesn't mean anything. And I love that because like we are as humans, we are meaning making creatures. Like we we have this eternal search for meaning and placing meaning on things because it, it gives us answers. It gives us a sense of safety or, you know, knowing and there's safety in that. Like I really my experience with myself and with clients is that it comes down to a lot of that safety feeling. But really if something isn't aligned or if something, and this is what you pointed out too, like if something isn't aligned or if something, you know, like if your date, if all these dates that you're going on don't work out, like, yeah, it could also mean that like, that's just the person and that's just who they are, but it's also like, it's not a fault of anyone either. Yeah, it is absolutely. the fact that you might have things to release or heal or look at within yourself doesn't make them bad things it just makes them not aligned with what you are actually wanting so then you know that becomes something that you get to look at rather than it being a good or bad it can be like a well I've decided that I want this and this is something that's showing up that isn't aligned with that so now I get to just look at that and see what you know like see what that's trying to tell me or see whether it needs releasing yeah. or just acknowledgement or whatever it is, or maybe it is something that I actually do want, but I, I placed a meaning on it and, you know, told myself that it meant something totally different when it's actually, when it actually is aligned, like it could go both ways, but I love that you gave it neutrality because there can be so much um, blame indicated in the spiritual world as well of like well you manifested that it's your fault and it's it's not that mm. it's a fault it's not that it's like yes you created it you co-created you know like depending on what it is but it's not a fault it's simply a okay like this is you know it's just a thing it just it, it is just a thing <laughs> absolutely when you um uh, take things too seriously like your energy mm. slows down as well yeah so it's it's coming from this point of saying like this is just feedback this is mm -hmm. just pure feedback from of of my beliefs of of where i was or even like what i am choosing it, it's helping me choose something different and commit to something different as well Mm -hmm. um so I often say that when you manifest something that you don't want you always want to be like two steps ahead and you use hindsight um as a tool mm. yeah um you've frozen for a moment um so you were saying you want to be two steps ahead and then what? Okay. So when you manifest something that you don't want, you want to be two steps ahead mm -hmm. and use the power of hindsight to like really understand 
what could I possibly be grateful for mm. in the future about this happening in my life right now? Yeah. And when you do that, you immediately shift your energy around that and you do not assign such um, like big meaning to it. You, you just say, okay, so this just happened. This is not what I actually want. What could this be leading me to towards or what could this be teaching me right now that I would be super grateful in the future or that the future me would be really grateful about? And that makes it um, so much faster to move out of things that you don't want because mm. you're not getting wrapped up in the story. You're just yeah. flowing. And that's what I, like, that is the basis of this concept of riding the wave of energy because you're just flowing with the universe much faster and, and easier because you're not uh, getting caught up in stories around what you manifest or what you don't manifest so your energy gets to be clean you you don't um, take those things as evidence of why you don't get to have things yeah that makes sense oh my gosh yes so like that is that is so powerful in itself. Um, there are a couple of things you said there that I really want to highlight is like the story that we're telling ourselves, you know, about, oh, this happened this way or this didn't happen this way. And it's, and it's almost human to, you know, but it's also something that we can be aware of because if we get caught up in the resistance of things not working out, and I, I want to caveat that with like, it doesn't mean not acknowledging the feelings that show up because that's important to acknowledge and process. But when we get caught up in, in our heads in the story of, well, this doesn't work out. And then we, like you said, we make up the meaning of, well, that means that I don't get what I want and, and, you know, la la la, or I can't do this or, you know, whatever it is, then, then we're staying in that stuck energy. And you're right. Like one thing that we can do is, Go, okay, even if I don't feel it yet, what might future me be grateful for? Even if I don't feel it, even if I don't believe it yet, I tell clients that all the time, like you don't have to believe it yet, whatever it is, like you don't have to actually believe what that, like it's almost like growth mindset could be, like what that possibility could be. You don't have to believe in it, but you can let your brain acknowledge that that could, like that could be a possibility of, a feeling of gratitude you know and then and then see if you don't end up experiencing it so I really love how you explained that in terms of like yeah there's the story and getting caught up in the story or there's going okay yeah this sucks but what might I be grateful about it like in the future what might future maybe feel gratitude about this experience once I'm past yeah. the the suckiness of it <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Um, it was one question actually that I wanted to, uh, I thought of earlier to ask in reflection because of how the way your work has been led almost, I don't want to say as a result of your arranged marriage, but you know, that could have definitely been a catalyst. Do you, do, are you in a place where you feel gratitude for that experience and what came out of it yet? So are you still journey oh, no, absolutely no 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 yeah. absolutely uh I I feel like actually um I wouldn't ha change anything around that experience mm -hmm. like I would just have that experience again because I I mean it's not like I want to have that experience again. you wouldn't choose that. it again yeah <laughs> yes, I, would, I would um I think it was totally worth it because I am a completely different person as a result of that. So it's um, it's an experience that showed me a lot of my own power and my own um, ability to love myself through it because it was not only about like learning about self-love or, or manifestation around 
like concepts it was very um experimental i was i was for example um learning how to love myself when i didn't want to go out of bed it's a very different experience than just saying oh accept yourself yeah um so it, it's it taught me so much about me and it really unleashed like this completely more like freer more confident um more beautiful version of myself that i i don't think um i mean there's i don't believe that you have to like go through an experience like that in order to grow at all yeah. or to transform um yeah. i mean but, i don't think that's but since you required. did yeah <laughs> but since i did yeah. um i wouldn't change it at all for sure i love that yeah that's a really yeah. that's a really powerful note too i agree like we don't need to suffer but we will still experience things that we don't love <laughs> yeah. so it's more like it is really like a, since i did this is the opportunity that's presented and I love that you've had that experience and that you feel the way you do on this side of it that's 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 important and that's that's really powerful and that's really special as well so yeah and oh, we yeah. get to choose what what rock bottom means like mm. you we get to choose like all the time uh what changes we want to make in our life and mm -hmm we will have not one but many different moments when we say okay this is enough around whatever it is around your body maybe you reach a certain weight or you get sick or whatever mm. um maybe like around your money like there's many different moments in life where we get to choose a different reality and we don't like if we are listening a lot more to ourselves and, and to the little nudges we get of like oh maybe I should do a juice fast or maybe I mm. like I should stop eating sugar or whatever then we don't have to get to those moments in order to shift things and to change things um, but there are many many times where we get to commit and commit again and and choose again mm. uh, a million times to change and many different directions yeah so yeah I love that I it's all an opportunity to just keep choosing because it's like even the wrong decisions or well, the uh the not aligned decisions are part of our experience so yeah. you know like it's our human life to live also so oh thank you so much for sharing all of this this is such great food for thought and I feel like it it helps give people a little bit more permission to just to live their lives and to not put have the pressure of needing to know everything ahead of time because hindsight is a gift also like it's not just a thing that we get and then we're like oh well then it's ruined and I can't use it it is it is an opportunity there too so um how can people find you and your work absolutely so you can find me on instagram mm -hmm. um that's where I hang out the most <laughs> Um, you can find me as Alegria Tosi, and we will write it down for people. Yeah, it'll um, be all in the notes. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. So um, you can find me on Instagram. You can also find me on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, right now I'm working on a new program that's called Soul Seduction. And it's all about manifestation and really like learning how to manifest from your feminine energy and from choosing your goals in a way that makes you feel supported and balanced instead of like all always being burned out and i work with a lot of women who are in that place who are feeling mm. burned out most of the time so um that's what's coming next right now so if if anyone wants to jump into that then you can send me a dm as well yeah i love that yeah. thank you so so much um and yeah go go follow and and soak in more of the goodness especially if it if it speaks to you because this was a really like it was a really powerful conversation so i'm so grateful for your time and energy totally. 
Um, and thank you for sharing with us. Thank you for having me. This was beautiful. <laughs>